is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. I am super excited for today's episode because we're going to be building something today and it's been a long time since we've done a DIY project. So in today's episode, I'm going to be showing you all how to make a strawberry tower. This is a vertical strawberry planter that's going to maximize space and utilize an otherwise ungrowable spot for strawberries so you can get more production and really add a cool feature into your garden. So let's go through what you're going to need. You're going to need a hole saw. I chose a one and three quarters inch hole saw. A two inch hole saw would also work great. Something that you're going to drill into uh, your piece of PVC, which is obviously the next thing in the, in, the, the elephant in the room kind of, uh, which is a piece of PVC. This is a four inch piece of PVC. You want to go at least four inches. Six inches would be great if you can find it. I couldn't, so four inches is what I'm going with. The next thing you're going to need is some screws. Lots of those. We'll go into detail. To secure your brackets, because your brackets are what's going to hang the strawberry tower. You're going to need some caps. Lots of them. For me, I'm going to cut this 10 foot section into three foot pieces meaning I'm going to have uh, three different layers to my strawberry tower, meaning I'm going to need six of these uh, caps here. Uh, and then the next thing you're going to need is some PVC uh, glue to glue the caps on. You're going to need some washers that just dropped, some rope. This is some uh, super heavy duty nylon rope. Uh, it is uh, rated at 124 pounds of safe working strength. Um, and so divided up between two hanging points. Um, this can really hold 200, uh, about 248 pounds roughly. So that's plenty. And then you're going to need just some eye bolts so that you can tie each one together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut myself three foot sections here. This is going to ensure that I have three levels to my strawberry tower. So the next thing we're going to want to do is actually attach our eye bolt before we put the caps on. Because once you put the caps on, there's no way for us to attach the nut. And we also have our washers for that purpose as well. So each eye bolt is going to get a washer and a nut so it can be secured like so. All right, so I got the eye bolts on and now we're ready to actually seal off one of the ends. I thought it was important to point out that um, I did not mention this earlier, but you're going to want to put an eye bolt on both the top and the bottom because once you have it uh, hanging vertically, you're going to need something to attach to the top as well as something to hang from the bottom. So having it on both the top and the bottom is essential. Um, and so now all we're going to do is we're simply going to take these four inch caps here and I'm going to attach it to just one of the ends because we need the other end open so we can fill it with soil. That's the very last step is to cap off this end, this end here. So while the PVC glue is curing, I'm actually going to secure the brackets to the fence post because we are gonna run out of time, so I'm gonna have to pick this up tomorrow. So I figured I might as well use my sunlight at least to uh, get something done. So, all right, we're gonna measure out 31 and a half inches between uh, between holes and that way uh, we have a real um, a real square um, real square and level mount so just got the brackets installed and just in time too because we're losing light so I'm gonna go get some sleep and we'll catch you all back here in the morning Good morning! It's the next day and you didn't miss out on much. About 20 minutes after we shut off the camera, it just started downpouring and it rained all through the night into the morning. So we got out here as soon as we could. The sun's starting to come out and uh, that's just a great sign because it's going to be a beautiful day. But right now and setting up for this video, uh, it was just super humid, damp and kind of cool. Um, and I would normally avoid days like this or, or times like this in the garden because I would just get eaten alive by mosquitoes. But uh, shameless plug to this product I've been using for the past two weeks, it's really turned the most dreaded time of the day into my favorite time of the day because it's usually cool. And um, you know, in the um, early mornings or later at night after the heat of the day is gone, I like to spend time outside in the garden. But the problem is, is here in Michigan, the mosquitoes are terrible. And so I discovered this product about two weeks ago and I've been using it 
It's produced by a company called Aaron Gel and they're citronella patches because I don't use DEET. I don't use any DEET in my life whatsoever. So mosquitoes for me are really bad and I just get, eat, get eaten alive. And they're adhesive patches. So I've been throwing them on my shirt here, uh, like you can see there. And then also I've been throwing one on the other side like that. It smells absolutely incredible. It is DEET free. And so since it's an all natural product, I had to give it a quick shout out because it's really working. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to drill our holes, which is where we're going to plant our plants. This is really, whoa. So uh, the first tube, I already did one. It was kind of a learning experience because this hole saw does not have a center auger inside. Um, so what happens, or a center bit. So what happens is if you don't start it slowly, it swirls all over the place. And I accidentally cut my thumb actually, because it swirled all over the place and nicked my thumb. So. Um, you got to obviously get a good one. Ace Hardware, not a great place to get a whole saw. Uh, these are Ace Hardware brand, would not recommend. Um, you owe me a Band-Aid, Ace. Um, because they should have a center bit, but because they don't, you got to start them slow and then go with it. Otherwise, they swirl all over the place and um, end up in the blooper reel. So now that we got our holes drilled, all we're going to do is we're just going to take a super small bit just to put some drainage holes on the bottom. This doesn't have to be any rhyme or reason or a specific number. Just make sure there's adequate drainage holes so that your strawberry plants don't drown. So now that we got the planting holes uh, drilled as well as the draining holes, now we're ready to fill it. So I'll get it all filled up and then we can actually seal it off. Now you might be wondering to yourself, Luke, how do you plan on re-amending the soil? Well, I plan on using a liquid-based fertilizer, a liquid, organic liquid-based fertilizer, so that um, I can keep the plants fed without having to change out the soil because perennials or uh, strawberries are a perennial, so they're going to be coming back year after year. And the soil that I'm using, it's just a really basic homemade potting mix. It's one part compost to one part peat moss. And it's been about an hour since we last saw each other. We had one more rainstorm come through and how quickly things changed. It just went to straight bluebird skies, bright as can be. And uh, while we were waiting, I went in and cut, in, cut up some rope here. Uh, I just went and cut up six pieces of rope, uh, equal length at about 22 inches or so. By the time we tie off and have some waste, um, I'm guessing we'll be left with right around like 18 inches or so, and that's gonna be perfect spacing between each level. So uh, let's go. Let's go get it hung so we can plant it out. Alrighty, so we're gonna make our way through here, and I'm gonna hang up this first one just like that, and that way I don't need to tie it with any rope. And then I'm just going to tie up the first one here loose because it's just me. And uh, I don't know how else I'm going to really do it. The overhand knot makes doing this with one person fairly easy. Now all we have to do is plant it out. So I've been letting these strawberry runners kind of go wild for this very purpose. I wanted to have them go into the mulch so that I can simply pick them off. And now I've got a plant that's ready to go and they will fruit next year. Strawberry runners are so great for this. And we're also gonna be moving a lot of these up to the cottage garden, which is currently being converted mostly over to a uh, perennial, a perennial food forest. All right, let's go plant it up. All right, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my plant, make a little hole, wiggle the roots down in, and then backfill with my fingers, and there we go.
the more advanced the root system is, the harder it is to actually get these into the hole. So I'd recommend getting ones that are rooted like barely and that way you can uh, that way you can get them into the hole a little easier. That first one had a lot of roots on it, so it made it a little more difficult to backfill. So there you go. There's how to make a vertical strawberry tower for less than 75 bucks. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And show me pictures on Facebook or Instagram or even Twitter of you making these or even make a video. I'd love to see videos of you guys making these or improvising on it and uh, maybe do a whole fence of them. That'd be so cool. I'm gonna start with one and we'll see how this one goes. And, uh, and then I might add three or four more, who knows? So, all right, I hope you guys enjoyed. Grow vertical, use that vertical space. We'll catch you all later on the next episode. Grow bigger, go home. Bye.